Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. We are gathered here today because one of you let me know in the video of me swatching out my granulating paints that it was just too far away for you guys to really see and enjoy the granulating colors that I showed in there. Since a lot of you did like the swatches I did on my granulation 101 video, I figured why not go back in and swatch out my palette again, only then with a more close up view of them. So besides them being more close up, I will also show you guys what adding more water and um, back blooms look like in these paints so that you can get a real good sense of the paint itself. Um, this will result in the video taking a lot longer and there are 18 paints in my granulating palette. So in order to not make a hugely long video that nobody can watch in totality, I made it two parts. So we're just going to get started on the first part and I will be showing you nine of my granulating paints close up, sped up, uh, to where they are completely dry so that you guys can enjoy them on screen and figure out if you think you need to add them to your collection. I do want to add a viewer warning here because a lot of these paints will make your mouth water and basically hurt your art supply budget a bit if you give in to all of the greediness that comes from this video. So viewer discretion is advised. So starting off with a very great first contestant, we have the watercolor Tundra Orange paint by Schmincke. Now this paint is made up of uh, three pigments. So we have the PR233, which a lot of companies uh, that make paint actually use for their potter's pink. So that ha is a pinky color that granulates strongly. There's also a PBR7 in there, which is the brown color and a PY43, which is a yellow. So this paint has a lot of dimension and it can be used to edit um, in some nice texture in like uh, a foreground or a soil type, but it can also be used in paintings that include animals that feature these types of colors on say their fur. Next up, we have the Potter's Pink by Daniel Smith. And to no surprise, the one pigment that is featured in this paint is PR233. So it is that pink reddish tone that you also saw the Tundra Orange use. A lot of the Schmincke paints of the super granulating range actually feature multiple granulating pigments into one paint to make them multidimensional. The Potter's Pink is a standard uh, color that is used by a lot of companies for a heavily pink reddish granulating paint. Now we have the Galaxy Pink by Schmincke uh, and since that is a super granulating paint from Schmincke it has two pigments. It has a PV16 which is a violet type of color and a PBR33 which is supposed to be a brown um, and you do see it in this paint somewhat but I don't think the brown is very prevalent. I actually started doing uh, adding some water, diluting extra, and putting in some back blooms for you guys uh, from this paint forward so you guys can enjoy the paint in all of its mar marvelous glory. Um, and you can get a real sense and feel for the paint. As this galaxy pink dries, it becomes a little bit more of a dusky pink, which is very nice to use if you don't want a super vibrant painting in the end. Now, this color I'm about to show you guys would definitely make it in a top five of my most favorite granulating paints. Um, not to say that um, that is based on how I use it in paintings, but just based on the paint alone and what it looks like. It is so nice. This is the Tundra Pink by Schmincke, a super granulating paint in their range made up of only two pigments. This is a uh, PB29 pigment and the PR233. So it's the similar dusky pink from the Potter's Pink pigment. Now you can really see those pigments play together, that pink, that blue, 
And as it dries, it just gives so much granulation. It gives so much diversity in this color. It is super, super pretty. Something that I did find as you look on the screen now, it does seem to be a lot more purple slash pink than it is when it dries. Then the blue really shows up and um, sets itself a little bit more on the paper. So you end up with a more bluish undertone than you see uh, in your first instance. This would be very nice to use if you were painting, say, a morning sky and you wanted some diversity in that or you wanted a bit of haze uh, through that, this paint will really be great for that. Now, it could also help you edit in some sickly type of skin colors, which I do use in my scarier works, um, but that's such a niche, I'm not sure any of you is helped by that suggestion. Now, Rose of Ultramarine is actually one of the colors I use most for um, skin that appears a bit worn or you can see the veins through, sometimes even some bruising. But you can also do a lot less malicious things with this paint, like creating a nice dusky sky uh, or close to sunset if you dilute it. It is a super versatile paint and you can see the dimension that it packs is amazing. It is made up of two pigments, which is a blue pigment, PB29, and a violet pigment, PV19. And as you can see, uh, the paint push itself away by the water. You can really see both tones coming out so nicely and both of them being granulating colors is stunning. Like a great super granulating paint by Daniel Smith. And mind you, they don't even market it uh, like Schminka does, like, oh, this is super granulating. This is just their standard range, and it includes a little G on the tube, so you know it granulates. So there are some really uh, pretty gems in their collection. Now, moving on to Tundra Violet by Schminka. Now, this appears to be a fan favorite from the Granulation 101 video I did. A lot of people were commenting that they absolutely needed this paint uh, in their collection to work with, and I can totally see why. This is one of the super granulating paints by Schminke, as mentioned, and it uh, is made up of two pigments. It is the blue pigment, uh, the PB29, so the same one as in uh, Rose of Ultramarine that we saw before, and it is a brown pigment, the PBR6. Now, just as Rose of Ultramarine, uh, Tundra Violet really can be such a surprise depending on how you swatch it out. Because if you just swatch it out evenly, it doesn't really seem all that special. You can see a couple colors sometimes, and yeah, it's nice. It has some granulation. But this paint, as well as the Rose of Ultramarine, really start to show off how pretty they are if you add in some back blooms, if you dilate some more with some water at certain points, it is one paint, but it can give you so many effects. And if you can just learn to let the paint do its own thing, so uh, relinquish that control to the paint and the water, you are going to get so many lovely effects and people are going to be asking you, how did you do that? You might not even know, but you can just say it's your super well-trained artistic brain at work. Now, what would you use the Tundra Violet paint for exactly? Well, of course, skies are always a great option, uh, especially some darker skies. As you can see, uh, the more dark you have this paint, it will really lend itself well for that. But you could also use this for, say, an interior of a cave of some sort, uh, some rock in the shadows. It can be a real great shadow color for you and add some dimension uh, because of that brown included in there. Moving on with the cobalt blue violet, a lot less muted. Look at that color go. It is super vibrant. It is a stunning color purple. It is made up of two pigments. This is the PB28 and the PV19. So a blue and a violet pigment together, creating a 
violet that is more towards the blue side, so a cooler purple. Now, as you can see, the granulation really shows up when you dilute this color, um, and it does have those two pigments together, but because they are quite similar in hue, you won't actually see as much of a difference as we saw in the Tundra Violet or the Rose of Ultramarine paints. Now, it does back bloom a little bit, but uh, it doesn't really seem to stick, so you don't actually get the more veiny structure of the water pushing the paint back. Now, that might be because of the paper was too wet or I used too little water, so it could be technique, but it isn't a paint that um, really heavily sets in those type of textures, in my opinion. Now the granulation is there, but it is a lot more fine than uh, granulation that we've seen in other paints. This paint can very well be used also in floral paintings if you want to add a little bit more texture or get a little bit more creative with your florals. Now up next we have the Cobalt Teal Blue color by Daniel Smith. Now this is also a paint that the granulation isn't super uh, big or heavy. It is a more fine milled paint, but it does still granulate. Of course, it is also super vibrant, just as the purple we saw before this. Uh, the granulation really shows through more if you dilute it, same as the last paint, and the back blooms don't tend to do as much. Cobalt Teal Blue is made up of PG50 when you're using the Daniel Smith one. I tend to use it for little pops of colors here and there, and also some mixing with other granulating paints to create my own unique colors. Now we have reached the last paint I will be showcasing in this video, in this part one. It is the Glacier Green by Schmincke. Now this is also a paint that surprised me when I got it and I could tell uh, some of you were surprised when I showed this in my granulation 101 video as well. It is a color that looks pretty muddy, unremarkable when you apply it like this. You can see some of the granulation, but it's nothing to be overly excited about. But then you start to add a little bit more water, maybe do a little bit more back blooms and as it dries, the two separate pigments that are used in this paint really show themselves much, much better than when first applied. This is made up of two pigments, the PR233, so that's the same pigment used in the Potter's Pink, and the PG50, which is the same pigment used in the Cobalt Teal Blue we saw before. And then it dries, and you have this paint that just adds so much dimension to your waterscapes or uh, maybe even stones that you put in like a lake type of setting and it just makes you so happy on the inside. So absolutely recommend the Glacier Green by Schmincke. And I can't believe we're there already because I just like seeing my own paints displayed this way and telling you guys about them. But we have reached the end of this video. Now, as mentioned in the beginning, I will be doing a part two featuring the other nine colors that my palette includes, and I will be taking the journey with you guys on those colors. So if you guys are as excited as I am for this video, but also the part two coming up, uh, maybe leave a like on this video and consider commenting down below what, which paint that I showed here was your favorite? Are there paints that you consider getting because of this video or paints you already have and are glad to see them this way on a screen? Um, just let me know. I'm so grateful for everybody that watches this and all of the comments are such a motivational factor for me to keep doing these types of videos. So thank you guys so much. Also, if you wanna support my channel further, please consider subscribing um, because it really does motivate me so, so much. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.